I have so many conversations with myself that I don't usually feel confident having in social setups. But I am pretty sure I am not alone. Join me on this podcast as I have these conversations unapologetically loud. My name is June Robinson and welcome to another episode of Cut the Monologue. So before I take a deep dive into today's episode, which I am going to do in a few, how are you? No, like truly, truly, genuinely. I know, um, you know, in the context of socialization, we always ask, how are you? And someone just, your response is, I am fine. But this is my question to you. How are you? Genuinely, how are you? I want you to answer that question. You can answer it on yourself or you can share your response in our comment section and let me know how are you? How are you doing? I am okay. I am well, you know, since the last um, episode, I have been good. I can say I've been good. Lows, highs, but generally I have been good. So, yeah, (laughs) that's it. Um, Welcome again to... Uh, this episode and on this on this episode i want to focus on guarding your energy and navigating uh, relationships and boundaries and i feel like that is something that we look down upon can i say look down upon i think i could say look down upon especially because um i did an i i did do an episode on the journey of forming friends especially as an adult i feel like it's something that we have this um self battle with in our minds that we never want to openly talk about it how difficult it is to form friendships as an adult because your needs and your wants they change and you're becoming you're beginning to become sorry you're beginning to become more intentional with your interactions and with this intentionality that you're carrying around every single time you're interacting with someone the energies that you come across, be it your energy or these other people's energies, how is this energy playing a role in how you're interacting with these people, in how you're forming these friendships, in how you're navigating these relationships and boundaries. And so while it is something that we do not consciously think about, the energy that we carry, the energy that the people around us have it does play a major role in how this relationship that you are either forming or this relationship that you're forming it does play a role on how this relationship is likely to play out and how it's likely to navigate so it is something to talk about and as you all know this is catch the monologue and our conversations are unapologetically loud so let's take a deep dive into this conversation for today So very quickly, I would want to just give you a definition of the concept of energy exchange in interpersonal relationship. And this refers to the way as individuals, we interact and affect each other. We could affect each other emotionally, which in most cases is the case. Um, We can affect each other mentally and to some extent physically. Energy in relationships i want you to remember for those of us who did physics we have um this um uh analogy this analogy there's this analogy that energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed but it can be transferred from one form to another okay and that's the same analogy that energy brings even in our interpersonal relationships it cannot be created it cannot be destroyed but it can be transferred from one form to another and because of this transfer it does rub off on us and it therefore can affect how we interact with people how we view scenarios or how we view situations that present themselves while navigating these relationships and some of some of the factors and 
before I jump into the factors, I want to just give a brief example. We have these situations where that day, maybe you're in a house set up and maybe your brother or your mom or even yourself, you wake up and you're feeling moody. And you don't want to interact with people. You feel like isolating yourself, locking yourself in the room. Or if someone comes to talk to you, you, you really are not articulating your words um, in the most respectful way. You kind of have an attitude when you're talking. I feel like that is something that we have seen ourselves on how it rubs off on people. All of a sudden, everybody else is affected by this negative attitude or this negative mood that you're carrying. So it goes back to how I'm saying that energy, it cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed, but can it be transformed from one form to another? Yes, and in this scenario, it can be transferred from one person to another and have an effect on how you're navigating that, okay? Um, and I want to dive into the factors that one should consider in interpersonal relationship. So we have positive and negative energy. And in this scenario or in this aspect, um, interpersonal energy between individuals can either be positive or negative. And positive energy, they include feelings such as of love, support, empathy and kindness, which in most cases, they have the tendency of uplifting and strengthening the relationship. And on the other hand as well, there are negative energy in interpersonal relationship and this can encompass emotions such as anger resentment jealousy and criticisms which have a high likelihood of draining and weakening the relationship the relationship can either have already be formed or it can be in the process of being formed so such negative energy um, that I have mentioned, they have a likelihood of draining and weakening the relationship. The other factor is reciprocity. When it comes to energy exchange in relationships, it has to be reciprocal. It can't be that one person constantly is the one who is encouraging you, is the one who is pushing you to greater um, to achieve greatness, greater lengths and all that. And then the other individual is just take, 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 take. The person who is often the giver will at some point feel fatigued, will at some point feel drained. So in interpersonal relationships, when it comes to energy, whatever energy I give out, it should be able to be reciprocated in order for this um, friendship to be healthy and to continue to grow in a positive direction. The other factor that we have is emotional con contagion. and. Uh, like in the example that I have used, where someone's emotions are likely to rub off on you. So maintaining um, a healthy relationship, a consistent one. If someone in the relationship is consistently anxious or stressed, then it's very likely that it's likely, it's also likely to rub off on you. I want to give like a very short example, okay? We used when, uh, back in high school, if you're caught in a mistake and you get called into the staff room and you're told you're probably like three, four people, okay? And as an individual, you are not stressed. You're like, you know, okay, I have done the mistake. I'm going to get my punishment, do it, and go back to class. And among you, there's that one person who is extremely anxious and they're like, oh my God, what if, what if we get kicked out of school? What if we're given a suspension? What if, what if all the teachers come out of the staff room and, you know, they start um, raining in on us? And more likely than not, you will find that this person's anxiety starts rubbing off on you. And now you start being anxious when this anxiety on your end, it did not exist. You already acknowledge that I have done a mistake. I'm going to get my punishment. And you are waiting for your punishment patiently. <laughs> okay. But on the other hand, this other person is already sweating through their palms and they are heavily breathing and their hearts are beating so fast because of the anxiety that they have they have within them. So this anxiety that they have starts rubbing off on you. So that is what is emotional contagion. It, some, it's something that exists in another person. It's an emotion that exists in another person. And by proxy, you adapt or you attract this anxiety that this person has. 
it can emotional contagion can also manifest itself in you know a positive setup if you maybe woke up feeling low feeling down feeling like i don't want to talk to people but then everyone around you just has this positive energy and they're ready to face the day and they're ready to attack the day for the lack of a better word you suddenly will start feeling some form of positive warmth <laughs> going down your spine <laughs> and yeah so emotional contagion it is a factor that you should always consider in interpersonal relationship um the other aspect that exists in interpersonal relationships is balances of equilibrium so when it comes to maintaining a healthy relationship there should be a balance between the positive and the negative aspects of this relationship we used to have this thing um in high school where our principal used to tell us if you are in this school and everyone is saying something positive is saying everything positive about you not even a single soul can say anything negative about you there is a problem and if you are in a situation and people are just talking negatively about you there's nothing positive that they can say about you then there is a problem there has to be a balance a balance has to exist between the number of negatives and the number of positives for it to be a healthy environment too much negativity in an already existing friendship or in a forming friendship is likely to lead to resentment and the creation of distance so this ultimately leads to the friendship failing or weakening on the other hand too much positivity without addressing the underlying issues that exist in your friendship I want you to understand I want you to notice that I have said too much positivity without addressing the underlying issues because it's a friendship you're two people from two different walks of life two different views of maybe life or maybe you have the same view of life but there are some points where you differ so when you have too much positivity and you are not able to address the underlying issues in your growing friendship it can lead to superficiality and avoidance of important discussions whereby now you feel like you know what no like you keep on brushing things under the rug that leads to superficiality a healthy friendship should have a balance of equilibrium it should have instances where you both differ in thoughts but you are able to talk about that or to talk about this different in thoughts or this different in views amicably without anyone feeling as if the other party is stepping on their toes and while we're looking at the factors that someone is supposed to consider when you know forming interpersonal relationship or when they are existing in an interpersonal relationship there are also signs of toxic energy that drain this relationship and these are things that as an individual you should be able to identify you should be able to call them out you should be able to iron this negative signs that you're seeing or these negative signs that are manifesting themselves and some of these negative signs can be constant negativity when you're with someone and this person constantly wants to talk about the negatives they don't have anything positive to say to me that's a sign of of that's a sign of toxic energy from this person you are draining me if i come up with an idea let's say i have an idea of starting a side hustle and i'm coming to you and i'm sharing it with you as my friend i don't want you to dwell on the negatives i want you to be honest with me but it can't be that for every single idea that i come to you with you constantly have negative things to say about them i need you to criticize me constructively the other sign is lack of support and i'm not saying because um in the previous episode where i was talking about the journey of forming friends i talked about identifying your friend group identifying the strengths of each of your of your friend and knowing how their individual strengths play a role in your life and when it comes to lack of support there are friends in our friend circle who can come through for us financially we have friends who can come through for us by being the shoulder to lean on we have friends who we can go and vent to we have friends who can give us maybe the spiritual uh, um, guidance and when as you have a friend and this friend is not able to support you in any way 
that is that is a sign of toxicity to me it is a sign of toxicity why should i why should you or why should i have someone who is not able to support me in any way you can be a listen you can you can offer me a listening ear that is support because at times we want to just rant at times we just want to vent we just want someone who's able to listen and so lack of support to me if you're not offering me support that is an issue manipulation control and gaslighting as the point says itself you constantly manipulating someone into maybe doing the things that you want into saying the things that you want into going the direction that you want them to go to that is a factor one sidedness everything is about the other person everything is about the other person or everything is about you it could be you who is offering the one sidedness where the needs of your friend the needs of the second party or the third party they are not important whenever you guys meet up to have a discussion it's constantly about you 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 and never about the other person that is a sign of toxicity constant drama and also lack of boundaries i feel like for any healthy relationship there has to be boundaries and as we continue to grow as we are continuing to become growing adults we are learning at least i can talk about myself i am learning about the things that trigger me the things that i can put up with and the things that i cannot and as i am learning this about me i'm able to also enforce them in my friendships and be like you know no this is not for me it is for you and i understand that am i able to put up with whatever it is that it's for my friend that's up to me to decide if i am not what are the actions if i am if i am able to put up with it then what are the actions as well um jealousy and competition Ugh. why should you be jealous of me why should you be in constant competition of me i am your friend you should be able to love the things that are happening to me you should be able to see positivity on the good things that are happening to me why is it that my achievements are sparking a tinge of jealousy and i understand we we are human beings we are bound to have these feelings but to an extent of you feeling like you need to take me down no that is a sign of toxicity when you constantly feel drained talking to this person you just you, you see this person and you just want to disappear you maybe it's a friend at work you're thinking about waking up and going to work and meeting this person and you just immediately get drained that's a sign of toxicity do not ignore that sign and i'm sure we feel this way with certain people you know it could either be caused by not being able to put your thoughts across or every time you want to talk to them they're just a ball they're just a block of wall and you don't know how to get through to them so you end up feeling drained that's a sign of toxicity and also unwillingness to change we are human beings and human beings are bound to change but we have those people who want to stick to their habits you know maybe you are campus friends and back in campus you used to party I, i'm using the most obvious of examples and back in campus you used to party so hard and used to party you know a lot and now you're adults and you know your priorities are maybe shifting and everything but your friend wants to remain in the party days you know we all know the moment you finish school responsibilities change you get new responsibilities you have to adapt to these new responsibilities but there are those people who still want to continue living like we are still in campus we still have a 7 a.m class we have an 11 a.m class we have friday through sunday to just party because classes on monday are beginning at, at one so there is there are those people who are unwilling to change that is a sign of toxicity you should be willing to change as times go by and all of this toxic signs that i have mentioned they do have an emotional toll on us they make us to develop coping mechanisms that may or may not be healthy in order to avoid this toxic friends and this leads me to my next point of what is the importance of setting boundaries when you are navigating um relationships 
and you're navigating boundaries and you know you are guarding your energy while at this so i feel like one of the most obvious um significance of making and maintaining a boundary is respect for self when you tell a person or you tell this friend that no i'm not comfortable doing this i am comfortable with partying we can party one day of the week and it's up to this time that is that means you are respecting yourself you're not willing to let go of the things that value to you or the things that matter to you because of someone else you have self respect the other significance is um maintaining a personal space and and boundaries and uh, Play, they play a crucial role to ensure that you have personal space and enough time for self-care relaxation and also pursuing your own interests and goals so so do not feel like you're being unfair to this person because the resultant of that is you ending up being unfair to yourself and even in friendships your happiness your satisfaction is key in these relationships that you're forming maintaining boundaries also contributes to healthy relationships and this is because you're able to conflict resolve you're able to resolve any conflict that may arise especially in a scenario where you feel like a boundary that you created has been crossed you're able to talk it through talk it in a healthy way and you're able to iron out whatever issue that might have arisen due to this and continue to maintain a healthy relationship so boundaries and i know a lot of people like thinking of you know oh and this is usually how they say it oh you're going to maringo you know you're going to just ski and i wanna hazy fanya vitu zingine and blah 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 but yes you cannot do certain things having boundaries does not mean that you're a proud person it does not mean that you're looking down on other people it simply means that you are aware of who you are as an individual you are aware of the things that you can do and you're aware of the things that you cannot do and if this friendship is to work or if this relationship is to work i need you to respect these boundaries that i have created because i have taken my time to understand my boundaries to understand the things that i can and cannot do and so i need you to respect the journey that i took in understanding this creating bound creating and maintaining boundaries also um fosters an environment for autonomy and independence we are moving from the age of um show me your friends and i'll show you your character no get to know me and get to know my character not show me your friends show me your character and the creation of boundaries it continues to foster this because even in friendships you should be able to be autonomous you should be able to have some form of independence someone should be able to see you with your friend and be like okay um this is gal x and gal x and gal z they are both friends but gal x loves these activities while gal z loves these activities and they are still able to be friends and you know have a healthy relationship and have a and have a way of maintaining their individuality even in this friendship that they are forming and so while i am talking about the significance of making and maintaining boundaries i am also not blind to the fact that for a majority of us out here we do not know how to make or maintain boundaries or we do not know how do i get to this place where i am able to make to make boundaries so the first uh um thing is you need to be self aware being self aware means you're able to reflect on your own needs you're able to reflect on your own values and your limits you're able to understand what makes you comfortable and what makes you uncomfortable is in relationships this is essential for you to know before you communicate your boundaries to other people the other thing is identify your boundaries clearly define your boundaries to your friends don't have an maybe a maybe voice when you're defining this um boundaries to your friends let how you communicate it be clear clearly define it so that they are able to understand how this is important to you 
And the boundaries that you're defining, they can be related to your time, to your space, to your emotions, or any physical contact, you know? So you should be able to clearly define your boundaries. The other aspect is um, consistency. You should be able to maintain consistency when you are enforcing your boundaries. If you tell people that I am not okay with being outside till till 3 a.m. in the morning, stick to it. Make sure that by 2 a.m. you're already packing and you're going back home. Make sure that by 3 you're not outside. Don't be a flip-flopper where you're saying that you're not okay being out by three out till three a.m. Yet at three or one or three ten, you're still outside. You're partying. You're you 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 you're cheersing to you know, and you're also screaming to songs. Be consistent with what you have communicated with your friends. This is able to eradicate any doubt. It's able to make you look like you respect yourself and you know what you are talking about. Practicing self-care is also something that um, you should be able to do. Um, setting boundaries and also maintaining them is something that's so difficult because as I've said, people may feel like you feel like you're better than them. You feel like you bring more into the friendship than them. And so you should be able to practice your self-care. And this is made possible, by the way, by the creation of boundaries. Okay. Um, the other aspect is reevaluate and readjust. Like I've said, there are certain boundaries that need to be changed. What I'm saying is, as human beings, we are bound to change. Change is inevitable. Whatever maybe you are able to do in campus, you're not able to do in real life. If in campus you were comfortable smoking around with your friends, but now you've moved outside and you're not able you're not comfortable smoking anymore it means you have to be able to communicate it you have readjusted your boundaries you're maybe comfortable smoking three um three sticks of cigarette and you maintained it at three sticks of cigarette or whatever it is that you're smoking in campus but now you're out of campus and you don't feel like smoking anymore you should be able to readjust your boundaries and be like you know what we did this back in the day. I am in a new chapter of my life. I don't feel like this is for me anymore. I'm taking myself out. So you should be able to reevaluate and readjust um, your boundaries. Know your deal breakers. Know the things that you're not able to tolerate. Know the things that, no, I can go up to this point. But beyond that, that's not, that's not something I can do. That's not something that I'm willing to negotiate. Know your deal breakers. Be patient. The thing with creating boundaries, especially when you're either readjusting, you're reevaluating and readjusting your boundaries or you're forming friendships, is that it will take people time to understand that this is the person who you are or this is the person that you have become. So you should be patient. And being patient does not mean you let these people walk over you. You be patient in letting them understand that this is your new way of life or this is your way of life. And they should find a way to be comfortable with it. And so now you are at that point where you have identified your boundaries, you have communicated your boundaries, and now you're looking at strategies of guarding your energy. Because while you are setting these boundaries, it is mainly to guard your energy so that people's energy do not rub off on you and you lose your identity, you lose your autonomy, you lose your independence. So... Some of the strategies is self-awareness and mindful techniques. And this vary from self-reflection to triggers identification using visualization. Imagining yourself in that situation and how best would you go about if such a situation presented itself. So that's the importance of using visualization. Reinforcing the boundaries that you have placed and also prioritizing self-care you should also be able to say no there is a power when it comes to saying no and one of it is boundary setting when you say no to something or you say no to someone you are simply communicating to this person that i do not want to do this i am not comfortable doing this and i am not interested in partaking in whatever activity it is that you want me to do saying no also 
comes with a form of respect because it shows whoever you're communicating with that I have respect for myself not to do this. It's not me looking down on you. It's not me disrespecting you. It's me respecting myself that I cannot do it. Authenticity. By saying no, you're maintaining authenticity. You are remaining true to yourself, true to who you are. You're not pretending to be someone who you're not and thereby also fostering healthy relationship between you and these other individuals. Saying no also promotes healthy independence, that is you're maintaining your um, individuality and also promotes mutual growth between you and the other people that you're trying to form this friendship with. And so while you're doing all of this, there's this um, aspect that we always talk about whenever we are coming to the end of the year and it's like, oh, cutting off people from your life, cutting off friends. And it's and it, we usually say it as a joke, but look at it in a different angle. You have been friends with this person or you're trying to form a friendship with this person and it's not working. It's no longer serving the purpose that you wanted. They are either not respecting your boundaries or they are not viewing life maybe in the same lens that you're viewing life with currently. And you're thinking, how do I bring this to an end and it's something that you need to discuss the difficult decision of ending your friendship especially due to negative energy this person is constantly negative they're not bringing anything positive to your life you don't feel like they're adding value to you how do you end it and it's a difficult discussion because no one wants to lose no one wants to end familiarity no one wants to lose that Familiarity makes us comfortable. Familiarity makes us feel safe. But it comes a time where you have to end it. And in order to do this successfully without feeling like, um, you know, without feeling selfish, is reevaluate. Sit down, take a trip through memory lane and look at this friendship that you've had. Look at the journeys that you've taken and look at what has led you into being where you currently are and why you feel that this friendship is no longer serving you. Once you have a clear picture of where you came from, the journey that has led you to where you are and the journey that you want to take to get to where you want to be, you will be able to know the changes that you have to make and know how to go about making these changes and so as we are continuing to grow and we are continuing to mature into adult life into adulthood it is important to take note of how energy and how guarding your energy plays an important role in navigating your relationship guarding your energy helps you to understand who you are as an individual better it helps you to understand your boundaries it enables you to create these boundaries in these friendships and it's also able to help you identify if friendships are working for your benefit or they're simply draining you and how you can either take yourself out of these toxic situations or how you can be able to continue fostering the positive energies that keep on manifesting in your life so as we are coming as i am wrapping up this episode I want you, as my lovely listener, to reflect on the friendships that you have. We are continuing to grow into adults day by day. And we are transforming how we continue with our lives from generation to generation. So sit down and reflect on the friendships that you have. There is no need in putting up with baggage. I believe that the world and life as it is offers us so many challenges it offers us so many twists and turns for us to continue baggaging ourselves or for us to continue putting up with things that no longer add value to us but things that are draining us so i want you as my lovely listener to self-reflect on the friendships that you've had or the friendships that you have or the friendships that you are forming self-reflect on them ask yourself how are these friendships likely to bring about change in your life 
and how they are con- they're going to make you to continue to grow what impact do these friendships have in your life and um, i think with that you will be able to know and to make a decision on whether they are friendships that continue needing your energy or they it's time for you to let go and with that comes the end of our episode i want to thank you so much for tuning in and be sure to tune in to keep up and tune in to our upcoming episodes That's it for this episode of Cut the Monologue. Be sure to follow us on our social media platforms at Cut the Monologue. That is Twitter, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. And also follow us on all streaming platforms and turn your notifications on to always get notified whenever we drop an episode. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.